preacher, singer, <laughs> Earl. Uh, yeah. Who do we got with us today, my friend? Ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very excited. Um, what people don't know is that we've known each other from little boys. We attended the yeah. Galilee Church of God in Christ. So this is before any of us were doing anything that we're doing. We were friends, and I'm so godly proud of this young man. Um, we don't talk all the time, and we're going to do better, but I want him to know that I love and I value and I appreciate him, and I'm just so proud of him. Ladies and gentlemen, this gentleman is doing big things in the entertainment industry, and we're going to talk about that in the show with Dr. LT and Robert Odeen. Man, that answer was almost worth getting up at 6.30 in the morning. Well, brother, you know, well, it's <laughs> yes, brother, it's the yeah. truth. We got to give credit and honor where honor is due. Hey, thank you guys. I definitely appreciate it. And it's, you know, it's definitely been a long road to to, to where we are. But, you know, congratulations, um, you guys, with the, uh, you know, the new building and, you know, the success of your radio station. Um, you know, in, in the same way, I'm, I'm very proud of the progress that you guys have have made and still hold down the hometown, you know, so, and I, it's, it's an honor and a privilege to, you know, to be able to sit here and enjoy, you know, this, this company and being able to, you know, talk about the things that are going on, uh, you know, with, with my career and, and, you know, well, whatever well, we can talk about, man. Yes. <laughs> well, well, one of the things that we're very excited about Lamont is that, you know, uh, us Kojic, us Kojic boys are yes. back together again. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. and we never lost our roots. Um, uh, but we right. made sure that everything that we do, that God was pleased with yes. it. So I wanted to start off with there, you know, Kojic boy mm -hmm. in the big and, and, and where did it all start for you? Wow. Um, it started at this little church in Oceanside called Grace Chapel Church of God in Christ. Wow. And, um, you know, that's, that's where, you know, <laughs> that's where I was super young. And then, you know, we would always go over to St. Stephen's, you know, for the, um, you know, uh, activities that was always going on, you know, back when I was growing up, St. Stephen's was like, yes, man, that was, that was big time right there. Late night music, <laughs> late night musicals. Yeah.
facing on social media. They can see you right now. They can't hear you. So we're recording this so that we can repost it uh, uh, later. But okay. it looks like uh, right oh. now. Uh, but no, we, we, we're doing fairly good. The, the live stream yeah, is yeah. Okay. the live stream is just came back up. But um, we're going to make sure everybody uh, uh, gets this and see this. So, man, let's just talk yeah. about it. Um, sure. You were in San Diego um, mm -hmm. uh, doing your thing. Uh, you came and you were uh, the first MD for Evangel and the Ministers of Reconciliation. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and we, we did a lot of good things together. Um, but then uh, God took you somewhere else. Let's talk about yeah. this journey that you've taken. Yeah, that transition. From, that was a big transition. Yeah, from local all the way to this international stage man oh golly let me let me think you know i gonna be 55 in a couple of months so my gotta start thinking about the journey so it, it started off with um i had gotten a job um working at 92.5 mm -hmm. uh doing you know doing radio and um you know and then that really just kind of opened the doors up for, you know, for me to really stretch out, you know, so then, you know, I did a, probably did about six months there as, as a gospel DJ. Um, and then, you know, it was time for me to go to college because, you know, I was, you know, I was still going to junior college, but then I got accepted at university of Miami. So then, you know, I, I leave uh, to go out to college and, you know, I'm thinking in my head, I'm really going to take this broadcasting thing serious. And, um, you know, it things just started, you know, having different turns and twists. And, you know, as you learn really about the industry, you find out it's, it's you know, it's not as easy as people, you know, may think it is. Right. Um, so from that point, I started getting more into the, into the music. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember getting an offer from one of the people in Bobby Brown's camp to uh come play with bobby um you know they were looking for keyboard players and in my mind i was like yeah i'm good enough to play with bobby brown mm -hmm. <laughs> i played in church how hard can it be right <laughs> so uh so then at that point I, I moved to atlanta and um you know i i ended up you know it, it wasn't right away it really kind of took a little while before i was able to to get on a on tour with him. And so I ended up going to Japan um, uh, for part of about three months, experienced that whole road trip. And, you know, it, it was very much a whole different world. And, you know, playing in the secular world compared to playing in the gospel world is like literally a day. And mm -hmm. it is, mm -hmm. you know, the workload is insane. You know, yes. you definitely have to keep your sense of integrity. And for me, you know, I was not about to partake in a lot of them shenanigans. Oh, yeah. And so so the funny thing is, it kind of made me feel like, always feel like the odd man out. Um, you know, so, uh, you know, from there, you know, I, I actually had, uh, when I came back from tour, I was like, well, you know, I really didn't want to do that anymore. Um, so then I said, okay, well, let me get more into music production and at that time, I was, you know, I had a manager, which happens to be uh, Usher's mom. So at the time, it, you know, Usher was still trying to come out. You know, he hadn't gotten signed to a deal yet. And so, you know, she was, you know, managing his career. And then she she saw something in me and put me in a band. And, you know, we back up Usher every now and then. And then I started getting, trying to get into more music production and learning how to create music, mm -hmm. which is kind of like what led me into when I got to Evangel, I already had a sense of how to, how to create, you know, stage shows and mm -hmm. how to create music and things like that. It was really being in Atlanta, you know, around the nineties mm -hmm. where things were super hot. Everybody was doing it back then. And so it, it gave me an opportunity to really understand, you know, the craft of of, of uh, music production. So, man, I'm giving you all this whole journey. I was sitting there like, God, I've done a lot. So I got out of uh, the music industry uh, because I just, at, at you know, at a certain point, I was like, you know, this is just not my world. You know, I, I come from the church world. I know that. 
but going into secular and playing, you know, for all these R&B artists and what have you, it just really didn't feel natural. And even on the production standpoint of it, you know, even though I love music, I felt like that there was more that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So I came back to California. um, And this was right around the time when there was a writer's strike um, in Hollywood. And I say that because I, I was thinking, well, maybe I'll try my hand in television. So I ran across, uh, you know, some people that were doing casting and, you know, at that time they said, well, you know, we're not doing casting for anything scripted, but we are starting this thing called reality. Reality. Mm. And, uh, you know, maybe, you know, would you be interested in going on with our, our shows? I said, well, what show are we talking about? I said, well, we got this show called The Newlywed. I mean, I knew what the, uh, the what was, what is the, the Bachelor game? It was some Bachelor show, so, you know, that you'd go on and mm-hmm. see if you can win a date. And I was, you know, I tried it out. I was like, yeah, that's horrible. I, I'm not good at this. So I asked the guy, I said, well, listen, how do I get to do what you guys are doing? You guys are going out here finding people. Is that a real job? And I was like, yeah, you know, if you know people, you know, you could make a career out of this. And so I was like, all right, well, great. So I went down to the office and I uh, interviewed with the, the casting director. And, you know, the guy says to me, he says, you know, we have this new show that we, you know, we just, we're going to go to the second season called Blind Date. And so, you know, if you are able to go out and find people, you know, we would love to use you. Now, we can't hire you because we don't have any positions open, but we can pay you commission. So, I was like, so you know, so our, our quote is 15 people a week. If you can bring in at least 15 people a week, then, you know, we'll keep you on as a day player. And, you know, me being ambitious as I was, I actually brought in over 200 people. Wow. In one week. Wow. <laughs> it was to the point where they were like, okay, maybe we need to put this guy on payroll there you go so i i got a job blind date was my first show and you know just that sense of integrity and hustle was something that led me into a career into casting Mm -hmm. and from you know i went from that show then they started creating all these other new shows it was a show called the fifth wheel and there yep. was another show called uh date my mom yes it was yeah so it was all these shows going on and eventually i ended up getting a contract with mtv because most of these shows <clears throat> were coming out of mtv um you know i got you know you know so then i would get shuffled around i worked on the real world and eventually did wild and out <clears throat> and so i really started creating like a solid career um with mtv um, and then, you know, <clears throat> at one point things were kind of slowing down. So, you know, the networks, uh, when you work for like MTV or under, uh, Viacom, mm-hmm. um, Viacom is like a conglomerate. And so with that, there were other networks that I could try out for. So I was like, well, you know, let me go deal with my people. So I go over to BET and. You know, I had got offered a job to work on. Uh-oh. He's like, he's like Lord my, Jesus, I'm with my people. I know, I know. Your I people. Know. <laughs> so my, my, the first show they gave me was a show called Old Drama. Yep. And that was with Vanessa Bell Calloway and Kim Whitley. Yep. Um, so I was a producer on that. And then, you know, once again, I'm going back and forth. So I'm going from BT to MTV. And so then the second show that I got offered to do at BT was called Judge Mooney. Which, uh, if you watch the uh, that Judge show with Steve Harvey, it was kind of like that, yep. but with Judge Mooney. But you know, Judge Mooney was, I mean, Paul Mooney. You guys know, yeah, <laughs> he was a handful. Um, and then you know, from there, then I got offered an opportunity to do Sunday Best, mm-hmm. and that was a really big a big show for me uh it was a lot you know and you know went out to atlanta uh organized the casting calls and things like that so you know i i really you know it's it's i guess my career has been somewhat of a 
a domino effect mm-hmm. that you know once you do something and 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 you show results it's not really that hard for somebody to call you to you know come to another show so you know then eventually i was like hey listen i'm going to you know take a break from casting and getting more into producing mm-hmm. and so that's where i am now i'm producing shows i i just uh, I, the Biggest show that I came off of was the uh, Respect movie with, with Aretha Franklin. Um, although I kind of worked more like in post production on that one, mm-hmm. but you know, there's other things that um, that I'm currently involved in. I've got a couple of shows over at NBC in development. Um, I've been working with another fellow San Diego, Norman Vance Jr. Wow, you know, we're working on a show right now. Wow. Um, well, well, so before- yeah. Before before you uh, go wow. past that, can you ask okay. Norman? Is our kind of people are is it coming back or is it or is it gone? Is our kind of say that again? It's our kind of people. He had a show okay. that um a show out called Our Kind of People. It was Yaya, and it was amazing. Oh, and we oh. trying to figure out if it's coming back or not. You know, I don't know. He does have a show coming out on Disney though. It's mm-hmm. it's very much. Um, a black show, um, and it's centered around um, the skating ring life. You know, because okay. you know one of his um, his biggest movies was Roll Bounce, Bounce yeah. which which you guys I don't know if you guys know this or, not, or if he's ever told you, but Roll Bounce was really about the San Diego yeah. skate ring. Palisade, yeah, Palisade, Palisade. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. they it just was... had to make it like Chicago, right? <laughs> and the craziest thing is, is that like Tory. We know the real Tory that uh, that went to Patrick Henry. Right. Uh, uh, we know we knew all the names and you know uh, all the things that were in there. So that was funny to us. So right. so let let me ask you this question. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, there's this hot uh, radio duel in San Diego mm-hmm. that that does the the wake up morning show on GLD Radio. It's heard where? Uh, it's heard in over 37 countries. Oh, okay. Nice. And we figured that, you know, one of the best reality shows uh, should be us. So we just want to pitch our, our show. We're going to call it uh, the Wake Up Morning Show. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love, right. Listen, man, we honestly, we really need to have something out there that really tells the story because so, so many, so, there's been so much great talent. It's mm-hmm. coming out of San Diego. Oh my God! Don't yes. Know about it. I mean, from all walks of life. Yes. You know, um, you know, you guys know I've worked with Nick Cannon a couple of times. Yes. I mean, Nick just did something probably like about two months ago. Mm-hmm. But you know, you got Nick. You have uh, Mario Lopez. Andre um, Day. I mean, you know, there's so many people that 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 are from this town, but there but there are so many stories from the town that are just waiting to be told and yeah. so don't worry I'm, I'm i'm working it out it's you know the thing is is my you know i just really started out with nbc mm-hmm. um they've been very very great um they they seem to be very open to some of the ideas that i have and and you know i've been blessed to be able to have a lot of great name talent that have been very supportive of the things that i that, you know some of the projects that i want to do mm-hmm. as a matter of fact i've got one show i wish i could talk about it i can't but i can say that i have one show that has a major major icon legend attached and so when it hits i will definitely come back here but, man, yeah and we'll, and we'll be at the premiere we're, we're going to cover the man, premieres we'll of all his you, stuff yes Yes, come to the premiere, definitely. definitely. A man, uh, a man uh, I mean, you go ahead and drop my name. Uh, uh, you know, uh, the icon of Listen, <laughs> it's, it's so big. If, it, if they're so big that I'm, I don't even understand that yeah. world. So I'm, 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 I'm going to take the fifth on this one, just, yeah. just today. Right, but you know what? <laughs> what I like about you is that you have worked from the ground up and you've been consistent yeah. and you served one thing about this industry a lot of people get the opportunities from serving they don't jump out yeah. on the forefront mm-hmm. like people see them now if they only yeah. knew the stories of the vivica foxes and all those kind of people they've, right, they've been right. in this industry for years without yeah. getting the big opportunities until the big opportunities came so yeah so, yeah so I'm, I'm gonna ask this i'm gonna do a throwback uh okay tell us 
uh, when you had the Jer- oh, when you had the Jerry curl. I was thinking about the Jerry curl this when, whole time when, he was when, talking. When you had the Jerry curl, uh, uh, I still got that, those pictures. Yeah. Right away. What when you was had your Jerry curl back in the day? What where did you think you were gonna be now? But when you was back there, what was your plans? Man, you know, let's, here's here's the crazy part. Oh, by the way, a uh, uh, big big uh, shout out to the Morrow family. Uh, you know, for for yeah, he had the California curl. Us... Yes, the California curl. <laughs> Internationally known. You know what? You know, the crazy thing is, I I was. God, I hate, I, I'm going to say this. I really never thought that I would admit to this. I, I, this is something I talk around my family, but Jerry Curl saved me, bro. Jerry <laughs> Curl gave me an identity. I didn't feel like I didn't have no presence. And and I used to beg my mom, oh, let me get the curl. I, let me get the curl. Cause I, right. So I can say that one thing I can say that curl did, it gave me a, a burst of confidence. Uh-huh. And and so did it. Of course, I never imagined my career would be where it is right now. But you know, I don't think anything made me feel like you know that it couldn't be. And and I think really to to the point of saying coming from the bottom, only people who know me know me, mm-hmm. and like you guys know me, obviously understand when I mean being somebody who you would never. Right, in a gazillion years, right. think would be in in the position that I've got. I am that person. Yes, I mean, and, and it's so funny, you know, because like you know, like I'm like I, I I'm good friends with Viola Davis and her husband. And I've heard Viola, you know, she's talked about what her up oh my god upbringing what a story. Is like and what have you. And so it's one thing to hear people talk about it, but it's another to know mm-hmm. for a fact that you came from the bottom. To I ain't live talking it. Drake to, to live bottom. It. I'm talking the mm-hmm. Southeast. Couldn't really figure out your identity. All mm-hmm. you had was just, you know, just blinders on to just push straight forward and what and, and not afraid to try. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm right. saying? And not not afraid to fail, really. Yeah. What you know, you know so that was the case. I think a blessing for you too was going to SCPA. I think SCPA yeah. um, allows those shy students and those students that yeah. don't really know what they want to do get in a position because position yeah. is the main thing. Being in a position yeah. to do yeah. so many things, it opens up your world to possibilities. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and did you have a short stint at Madison? Man, I had a short stint everywhere. I had a Please, Madison, Patrick Henry, um, Lincoln. I remember Lincoln. You know, I remember. Listen, listen. What it's, we're talking about? People coming from San Diego. I remember. You know, I was running track for Lincoln, and so the late bus would go and pick up certain kids. Yeah. You know, whether you're an athlete or if you were just on detention. Right. And so we have to go by Morris. To go pick up those kids, mm-hmm. and I used to cringe because I always knew Phase on Love was going to be coming on that bus. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying. And yes. with Phase on, we don't understand. We grew up with Phase on. Nobody wants to sit in the back of the bus with Phase on. Nope. <laughs> Crazy. He will light you up. Yeah. Anybody. And he was, and he was, the, he was definitely guaranteed to be on. The, that that uh, detention bus because he stayed in detention. Class clown. <laughs> and, and you know the funniest thing about it is is that um, that actually is uh, Evangel's cousin. And what? So, I didn't yeah, know that. it's actually okay. her cousin. And the funny thing about it is is that um, I never got lit up lit up by face on by mere fact I was part of the family. <laughs> but I've seen other people uh, get lit up. And um, I stayed from that. I would not go to the back of that bus. Not that day. Well, well, man, we're really excited about some of the things that you are doing. A lot of things that you're doing. We're going to want at once we get everything just right in the studio. We want to get you down here um, and also talk to you about some projects that we're working on. Robert Earl Dean is, you know, putting his producer's hat. Pete. Ooh, Pete. Ooh. We can't say Pete. It's Listen, one. I'm, I'm, it's I'm one bored. that's gonna make your hair stand on top of your head, and you ain't even got no hair. <laughs> hey, We're gonna leave that alone. We went from Jerry Curl. I'm, to I'm serious, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. You know, I don't say much about TV stuff, mm-hmm. you know, but right. 
Yeah. It's, it's something God gave me, and I, I, it's going to, it's going to bless the world. It's going to bless. Ooh. You know, yeah. listen, I am here for it. Uh, you know, I, I, I talked to Holly Davis Carter. You yes. know, on different occasions. And Koji. What have you. And so I feel that you know Holly has really just, you know, taken taken uh, uh, you know the the, the reins on on telling these these faith based stories and what have you. And I told her, I said, man, we got to do something. We got to go down to San Diego and we got to get some stories and 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 yeah. figure out because there it's it's nothing but gold in San it's, Diego. It's a gold yeah. mine. Look yeah. look at the people yeah. that have come from here, Jerry Bryce. Yeah. Um, Trey Boogie, you, yeah, it's so many yeah. great ones who are world renowned. Nick Cannon, who came yeah. right out of San Diego, Robert, man. Earl Gurney. <laughs> Robert Earl Dean, there you go, Dr. Leonard Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things about it, um, you've always been a true friend, yes. Um, Thank and you. the funny thing is, is that trying to keep um our scheduling together because we are we we all are always so busy but we're gonna have to have an old school church of god in christ come back together Let's do uh, it. uh wait a minute wait a minute he's coming Fri saturday wait, wait, he's this, coming Fri to norma's event saturday wait a minute let me finish okay can, can i finish mm -hmm. can i finish <laughs> okay uh 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 friday night fish fry with with, with, with a sweet potato pie uh, nice. on the side, you know, With some cold, homemade coleslaw and yeah. French fries. Yeah, let's yes, do yes. it. Let's do it. Let's Amen. Do it. I just, love it. just, just to sign off. Uh, you are now. Uh, uh, I see you have the best dad ever cup. Let's talk about your personal life. How, how's okay. looking? I, I, I think you're still smiling. Oh my God! Oh, are you kidding me? I, I have the best family ever. You know, I, me and my wife, we've been together now for seven years. Wow. And yeah, I know it's crazy. And so, you know, we have a, you know, we have a mixed family, uh, a blended family, should I say. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our kids are our kids. There's no step this or step that. Right, you right. know, we, we, we all, you would think, you know, I gave, you know, I was a part of the creation mm -hmm. of her kids and, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And so, you know, it's, you know, we have, it's something straight out of the Cosby show. That's all I can say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you know, I'm very proud of them. Yeah. Did your parents tell you that we're we're serving together at St. Stephen's? You know what? I I didn't really get in a lot of conversation, but I know she talks about you got quite a bit. So <laughs> it's just it's just amazing because your <clears throat> yeah. father your father and mother have been a part of my life with my father. Um nice. Deacon Dean, my mother. We have gone I'm telling you, we were like we grew up. I thought we were relatives growing up because that's how close <laughs> we were right. with with the family. Right. So I'm I'm just right. I mean I'm just I'm just sitting up here looking at you in awe because even in voices we always talked. We were always on yeah. the sidelines talking yeah. because of that bond from childhood. So yes, to see absolutely. you to see you doing what you're doing, it was God because you were so quiet. You weren't the <laughs> you were you were quiet and passive. That goes to show you, you that our plans are not our plans and that God. He does and supersedes our our greatest imaginations. And you know the funny thing, uh, I, I look at it different. Mm -hmm. He 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 looked at you as quiet and passive. I looked at you as the pit bull, that one that sat over in the corner and 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 when you least expect just need to be unleashed, bit, bit, bit the mess out of you. Yeah. And 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 I saw you had that pit bull tenacity to keep going oh. forth and even. Even when somebody said no, you always right. came back and found oh, a way yes. to get to a yes. And oh yes. So uh, much respect to you, my Thank friend. You. Yes. Um, knowing you're going to continue to do great things, and uh, it, it's just nice to have people in high places in the industry <laughs> and say that we know them. <laughs> Stop now, it. No, 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 no. I'm still the same person. <laughs> now, Sister Bacoria's son is the one you were talking about. Yeah, Norman. Norman. Mm -hmm. Sister Bacoya is at St. Stephen's. Been yeah. there for years as well. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Uh, 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 you know, not everybody came out of St. Stephen's, but a lot of good talent did come out of right, St. Stephen's. Right, right. You know, and yes. I remember yes. uh, I remember you on the organ with the Jerry Curl. Yeah. Killing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so thank God for the California Sash Jerry, Jerry Curl. Amen. And, and we thank so. God for the grand old church of God in Christ. Because as we sit yes. here and we think back, Look at yes. all the greatness in acting, well, Clavon Little, Clavon Little, and so many people that have well, come. Did you say Clavon or Clavon? Clavon okay, Little. Okay, Lord. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you know, Coach has just been the 
the the root of so much great talent. I mean, mm-hmm. if you think about just the history of, <clears throat> of the best gospel music comes out of Kojic. Yeah. So, Athletes. You know. I mean, just so yeah. many attorneys, yeah. lawyers, so yeah. many. Yeah. 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 And, you know, one of the things about it is that, you know, when we break it down, Kojic and, and all the different faith base have produced some amazing talent mm-hmm. and, um, yeah. So I want to say that first and foremost, because we're coaching boys, you of know, course. we're very excited about what yes. we're seeing in this time and in this yeah. season yes. and the expansion of us in all arenas of life. Yes. One of the things about with um, uh, Brother Pete is that he's still yet God, even in the midst of working yes. with all the other people, he's mm-hmm. still holding up uh, uh, the blood stain banner yes. for the Lord. <laughs> you know, yes. uh, uh, he can be in those places, but the places don't have to be in him. Come on. Yes. Yeah. And, and God like puts that. us in the light. He yeah. puts us yeah. in the light on purpose, but he chooses those he knows that can handle it. Amen. So with that being said, my brother, any final statements before we're going we're gonna to hit off and finish off our whole set with uh, Kenny Matthews. Uh, but okay. we want to make sure that you have the final word. Yes. Oh, well, you know, once again, um, thank you guys so much for having me on the show. And, you know, this has been great walking down memory lane. And I look forward to coming back and sharing some more things that I got going on. Uh, man, we do too. And one yes. said, no, that your mama's on the line. Yes. Say hi to mama. Hey, ma. <laughs> and this is to be continued. Yes, yes, yes. With that being said, this is none other than the incomparable Lamont P. Yes. Uh, uh, producer, visionary, mm-hmm. visionary, and San Diego and on. a Kojic boy. Yes. Right here on GOD Radio 1.com. Can you?